What I'm about to say in this video, it is all my opinion, conspiracy theory, whatever. I'm going to be presenting some information to you guys, but it's up to you to draw your own conclusions. up everyone it's me steph the alter nerd your nerdy alternative and welcome to another dose of the daily nerd where i break down the news and pop culture stories of the day that's pretty much caught me eye now this is a little bit of a different daily nerd video you guys i am not making any allegations whatsoever i am just asking the question is christopher boozy's bot sentinel breaking any laws in any way now, again, as I said at the beginning, I'm only just going to be presenting information to you. It's up to you to draw your own conclusions. Also, bear in mind, Christopher Boozy's Bot Sentinel may not be breaking any laws. And I'm so, so open to accepting that if new information comes to light that proves this. However, my understanding of GDPR and the UK's equivalent, which is the Data Protection Act of 2018, suggests the potential that this may not be the case now before i jump into all of that a little bit of housekeeping first up youtube human reviewer i always see you lurking okay i'm not gonna say any trigger words of anything that's going to offend your ear holes and to everyone else awesome enough to have clicked on this video hi welcome how are you doing if you appreciate this video and love news and pop culture on the daily do make sure you click on that subscribe button like share comment all of that good stuff and let's jump into this shall we again disclaimer i'm just presenting information to you it's up to you to draw your own conclusions i am not making any allegations whatsoever i am just simply asking the question this is it okay First up, let's start with my bot sentinel rating. Yes, so Mr. Christopher Boozy thinks that I'm size factory. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I'm 34% and I'm in the light blue area, which is my favorite color. So again, boozy, boozy, boozy. Thank you very much for that. Um, I remember uh, going on to bot sentinel, uh, you know, ticking all the boxes for the permissions and whatnot for them to give me this rating. I did this though uh with the reasonable expectation that i would be able to withdraw that permission at any point and we'll get onto that later on in the video we'll park that for now so bear in mind that on twitter in terms of my privacy settings i am not allowing any additional information to be shared with business partners nope 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 nope, nope. don't want that never ticked it never want it never will okay so also bear that in mind. Now, this is where my opinion, conspiracy theory, whatever, Christopher Boozy's bot sentinel could be possibly problematic. On their website, they have a fax page. And one of it is, how can I remove my Twitter handle from your website? And they answer, bot sentinel lists Twitter handles automatically when they are analyzed with our technology. We only use public information and we do not display private information on our website. We do not remove Twitter handles, nor do we alter scores on behalf of the Twitter handle owner. Please do not contact us to remove your Twitter handle or alter your score. Now, this is where my opinion, conspiracy theory, whatever, this could be seen potentially as problematic and where the laws of GDPR and the UK's version, Data Protection Act 2018, could come into force. Now, what is all of that? Well, GDPR, what is that first and foremost? So, it stands for the General Data Protection Regulation. And this came into effect a few years ago on 25th of May 2018, and it provides a legal framework for keeping everyone's personal data safe by requiring companies to have robust processes in place for handling and storing personal information. It's also designed to protect us as individuals from being contacted by organisations without our express permission. So what does all that have to do with privacy rights? Well, 
under GDPR, you're either going to be a data controller, data processor, or in some circumstances, a mixture of both. But as a person who uses the internet, you're also what's known as a data subject. Now, the GDPR recognises a litany of new privacy rights for data subjects, so the people like you and I who use the internet. And that gives uh, individuals more control of the data that they loan to organisations. So, as an organisation, uh, when I can get my teeth back in, it's important to understand these rights to ensure you are what's known as GDPR compliant. So, here's a rundown of data subjects' privacy rights. Now, there's eight in total. The right to be informed, the right of access, the right to rectification, the right to erasure, the right to restrict processing, the right to data portability, the right to object, and rights in relation to automated decision-making and profiling. Now, automated decision-making and profiling? Well, isn't that what this is all about? My understanding is that Bot Sentinel uses an automated uh, system to make decision and profile said user, i.e. me here, went through the automated system, the system made a decision and profiled me as satisfactory. Okay. However, the bit that I'm more focused on, guys, is this. The right to erasure, the right to be forgotten, the right to be able to turn round to Bot Sentinel and ask them, delete my data, and for them to comply. Again, remember, please do not contact us to remove your Twitter handle or alter your score. But under GDPR, I have the right to erasure. Now, Data Protection Act 2018 is the UK's version of it, and it pretty much mirrors the GDPR pretty much word for word, guys. So under the Data Protection Act of 2018, you have the right to find out what information the government and other organizations store about you. These include the right to be informed about how your data is being used, access personal data, have incorrect data updated, have data erased, stop or restrict the processing of your data, data portability, which is allowing you to get and reuse your data for different services, object to how your data is processed in certain circumstances. And you also have rights when an organization is using your personal data for automated decision-making processes without human involvement and profiling. For example, to predict your behavior or interests. And again, you go back to this. Again, my understanding of Bot Sentinel, automated system that has made a decision for me to be satisfactory, hence profiling me. Okay. So, consent. Remember when I said earlier on, that when I went to Bot Sentinel and I wanted to know what my scoring would be, I did so under the reasonable expectation that I could withdraw that consent at any point. Well, this is where this comes into play. So there are strict new rules about what constitutes consent from a data subject, i.e. again, you and me who uses the internet to process their information. Firstly, consent must be freely given, specific, informed and unambiguous. Requests for consent must be clearly distinguishable from the other matters and presented in clear and plain language. Here, data subjects can withdraw previously given consent whenever they want. And you have to honour their decision. You can't simply change the legal basis of the process into one of the other justifications. And then children under 13 can only give consent with permission from their parent. And you need to keep documentary, sorry, you need to keep documentary evidence, again, getting my teeth back in, of consent. This bit here is where I draw my eye to. 
data subjects can withdraw previously given consent whenever they want, and you have to honor their decision. So at the end of the day, I've turned around and I've said to Bot Sentinel, yes, here is my permission. Score me. They can't then just turn around and say, well, you gave your permission, so tough. Uh, 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 uh. Under GDPR law, which is mirrored, in my understanding, uh, with the Data Protection Act of 2018 under UK law, I can change my mind whenever I want to withdraw previous consent. And they have to honour that decision. They can't just turn around and say, no, we're not going to, and here's our, you know, the other justifications. Like, no. Okay. So, what Sentinel? Christopher Boozy, my understanding, they're based in the US. Well, I'm in the UK. I'm talking about Europe as well. He's not in the US, so... Sorry, he's, he's not in Europe. He's not in the UK. He's in the US, so... It wouldn't apply to him, right? Wrong! If you are a US-based website that collects and processes personal data on individuals inside the EU and UK, you are required to comply with the GDPR. You must ask and obtain the explicit consent of the data subjects before legally being able to collect their personal data. So... You can't have the argument of, well, do you know what? I'm not in the UK. I'm not in Europe. I'm in America. That law doesn't apply to me. It does. It does. Because if you are collecting and processing data on individuals who are inside the EU or the UK, you are still required to comply with the GDPR even if you are in America doing this. So, Christopher Boozy's Bot Sentinel is subject to GDPR and the UK's version, which is the Data Protection Act of 2018, based on my understanding of it all. Now, Automated processing, erasure, and data portability. So let's go into that in a little bit more detail. So the GDPR also bolsters a person's right around automated processing of data. The ICO, which is the Information Commissioner's Office, and they are the overseeing regulatory legal body when it comes to um, organizations uh dealing processing requiring accepting information all of that um they say uh individuals have the right not to be subject to a decision if it's automatic and it produces a significant effect on a person there are certain exceptions but generally people must be provided with an explanation of a decision made about them but guess what I'm not given any explanation about this decision of this automated system. Why am I just satisfactory? Why am I not normal? Right? So the regulation also gives individuals the power to get their personal data erased in some circumstances. This includes where it's no longer necessary for the purpose it was collected. If consent is withdrawn, there's no legitimate interest and if it was unlawfully processed. And it goes back to what I was saying earlier on. Under GDPR and the UK's version, if I've provided consent initially, I do have the right at any point to withdraw said consent, and they must comply to it. Again, my understanding of that all, right? Now, data portability, um, has been one of GDPR's biggest buzzwords. Uh, the theory is it should be possible to share information from one service to another. One of the best examples of data sharing is Facebook's ability to automatically transfer your photos to Google Photos account. Uh, this was created by the Data Transfer Project, which includes Apple, Google, Facebook, Twitter, and Microsoft. However, go back to this. I ain't ticked that box, is my understanding. So, uh, 
Yeah. No. <laughs> no. I don't want my information shared uh, with anyone else uh, from uh, outside of Twitter unless I give my permission to do so and have the right to withdraw said consent at any point within the law. Now, what could Christopher Boozy's bot sentinel win? GDPR breaches and fines, potentially. <laughs> so one of the biggest, most talked about elements of GDPR is the ability for regulators to hit businesses who do not comply with huge fines. Now, again, guys, I am not saying, I am not alleging uh, I am not say saying any allegations that Christopher Boozy's bot sentinel is breaking the law and is not abiding by GDPR and the UK's version. I am just asking the question, is it possible that they are breaking this law? You know, are they? That, it's just a question, right? If they are, this is what they could win. Breaches and fines. Um, now, Essentially, um, if an organization doesn't process an individual's data in the correct way, it can be fined. Uh, if it requires and doesn't have a data protection officer, uh, so someone in the organization that ensures that they are, you know, following the law, following the rules, that kind of thing when it comes to handling and the processing of data, can also be fined. If there's a security breach, it can be fined. Uh, in the UK, uh, the monetary penalties are decided by the Information Commissioner's Office, the ICO, and any money regained is rerouted back through the Treasury. Now, the GDPR says that smaller offences can result in fines of up to 10 million euros or 2% of a firm's global turnover, whichever is greater. So smaller offences fines up to 10 million euros or 2% of the firm's global turnover. Again, whichever is the most. The biggest breaches for GDPR can be met with more serious consequences. Fines of up to 20 million euros, guys, or 4% of a firm's global turnover, whichever is greater. Uh, so if it's a bigger GDR, GDPR breach, double it. <laughs> double it, guys. Uh, under the previous data protection regime, the Information Commissioner's Office could only issue fines of up to £500,000. So, guys, the GDPR and the UK's version gives the regulators more teeth. More teeth um, to punish those that are in basically flag flagrant kind of breach of this kind of law. So one of the biggest fines under GDPR to date has actually been against Google. Uh, the French data protection regulator, the National Data Protection Commission, fined the company 50 million euros, which is about 43 million pounds. Um, the commission said that the fine was issued for two main reasons. Firstly, Google not providing enough information to users about how it uses the data that it gets from 20 different services and also not getting proper consent for processing user data. Um, the biggest fines, though, could come from the UK. Um, the Information Commissioner's Office has issued a notice of intent to both airline British Airways and hotel chain Marriott for breaching GDPR. Um, it was said that British Airways would be fined £183 million, while the hotel company could be fined £99 million. So, yeah, guys, if a company, an organization is breaking GDPR or the UK's version of this law, we're not talking pennies here. We're talking potentially millions of pounds, millions of dollars that these companies are being fined for for not abiding by GDPR or the UK's version of it. Now, where do I come into this all? Well, earlier on today, I have actually contacted Twitter support 
Um, and I've said there's a company called Bot Sentinel, created and owned by Twitter user called Christopher Boozy, who's using my Twitter profile as part of the company's data collection that they then use. I live in the UK, and as such, I am protected by GDPR, the UK's version of it. Subsequently, I am afforded the right to contact Bot Sentinel to remove my Twitter profile information from their database and anywhere else they may have my Twitter data. However, they do not have this process in place and on their website they state that they only use public information and to not contact them to remove Twitter handles. However, under GDPR, I believe I'm still protected regardless as someone who resides in the UK and should have the right to request Bot Sentinel to delete my Twitter data from their database and all systems they hold and that they have no other option but to comply. Do please bear in mind that with Bot Sentinel, to my knowledge, being a US-based website, collecting and processing data on myself, who is an individual residing in the UK, they are still required to comply with GDPR regardless. As Bot Sentinel is using your company Twitter in this fashion, where it is, in my opinion, that they are in violation of GDPR by not allowing any option for me to request that they delete my Twitter data and for them to comply, what can you do about this to protect my data under GDPR? I then added another note underneath saying, please note that I'm formally giving you 30 days to respond upon which if I do not receive one or you do not provide a resolution that's to my satisfaction, then I will be reporting this GDPR issue to the UK's Information Commissioner's Office. And so this is where we stand at the moment. Um, and so I'm just waiting now for Twitter to respond. Now, again, just to preface this as I close out this video, I am just asking the question uh, whether Christopher Boozy's Bot Sentinel is breaking GDPR law, the UK's version of it. I'm not making any allegations that they are. I am just asking this question. It is as simple as that. I've presented you with information for you to draw your own conclusions uh, as to what the answer may be in your mind. Uh, with that being said, though, what is your answer? Enough with my gob. Time for your gobs. Comment down below what your answer is. And if you loved this video and love news and pop culture on the daily, served with a little bit of sass and gobbiness, which is basically this, right? Do make sure you click on that subscribe button, like, share, comment, all of that good stuff. And until the next time, you guys. Laters. Laters.